Okay, let's continue our discussion of VSB amplitude modulation. So VSB signal, right, we have our DSB signal here, and then it's been multiplied by this bandpass filter, which shaped the DSB signal into a VSB signal. To recover our original message, we're going to need to take our VSB signal, which has been multiplied by that carrier cosine wave to shift the components to plus or minus FC. And we're going to need to multiply that shifted VSB signal by a low pass output, which complements our input so that we can recover our original message. Okay, so let's do this by uh, substituting for our original message. So we can see, right, this is our VSB and we're gonna put it in here and we're gonna put it in here. So to do that, right, we see that anytime we have our F plus FC, that's going to be put here. So we have our F plus FC components and our F minus FC being placed into the part where we had F. So F plus FC, that's going to be put into here and F minus FC, that's going to be put into here. And likewise, right, these are going to go into this filter. So this first line here is this. So this is the first line, and then the second line we have is this one. Okay, so we've replaced the F with F plus FC and F minus FC. And we've also put into the filter this F plus FC. So that's, this is the purple line is the top line. And likewise, we've done this substitution in the bottom. Then we're going to simplify the FC and the arguments. So now we have some terms, which are F plus 2FC or minus 2FC and then some terms that are just F. And so this is just like our recovery of our DSB signals that we did previously. Now this makes sense, right? Because we know that in order to get our original message MF back, we're gonna need the baseband components. And right, this and this are baseband components. And we're already seeing that we have this HI filter and our complement H out filter. So after simplifying these, Right, it looks like this, and we can now distribute our input filter terms. So we'll multiply this here and here, and this here and here. Outside of all of this is still our output filter. So we've distributed our filter, and now we can see that because our H out is a type of low pass filter, right, to recover our baseband components, we can see that these terms are going to go away when we apply our H out filter. Our H out filter both complements HI and also because it's a low pass filter, removes these high frequency message components. So after that filtering, we are left with this. And we see that we have some baseband components of our message and we see that we have the HI filter, which has been shifted to plus and minus FC, which as I mentioned, this is a bandpass filter, which has been now shifted by plus or minus FC down to the low pass components. So to f if we factor out our original message, we can now see that we have these filters left as the other term. So we have our message multiplied by this system of filters. And recall, right, that we said in the, the previous video that the H out and H in filters are going to be complementary. So these are defined by a case that the, the multiplication of these two must be equal to one. So hopefully now you see what I mean by these two being complementary and why they must be complementary in order to recover our original message. If these two filters if the multiplication of these two filters is equal to 1, we can see that it's not going to have any effect on our original message, and therefore, of course, the recovery of our original message would be perfect. And that's why we design this H out filter to, uh, as a complement of the H 
HN filter. So these are the low pass components of the HN filter that complement each other to form H out. Uh, in this very special case of the complementary filter, uh, these two, the sum of these two would just be equal to one, and our output filter would be equal to one.